welcome back um, <clears throat> so so far we have understood um, soc um, components of the power dissipation in soc the techniques to reduce uh, dynamic or switching power uh, techniques for leakage control we also understood what is uh, uh, different uh, power management features clock gating uh, power gating right and also understood VDT minimization what happens how we uh, in case of power gating how we do um, 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 save restore right so how we save the states in the balloon latches and uh, um, and also we understood the thermal effect because that also impacts uh, and holds some power and performance we understood those concepts so as we move uh, further um, well, the concepts that we have built so far we will start applying and uh, in this chapter I will talk about uh, uh, SOC uh, power and clock domains uh, so there uh, it basically gives us uh, a more fine grain control for the um, power and performance management and um, uh, so that uh, at the very block level we can apply the, the, the techniques that we have learned so far like DVFS or clock gating or power gating those can be applied and in more fine grained manner so <clears throat> SOCs usually have um, a clock tree and um, as we have seen earlier in very first chapter that SOCs typical SOCs has many blocks and um, those blocks uh, need to be supplied with the clock um, uh, uh, for the data uh, data processing or data transition of the state that those are um, circuits um, are different are working on the clock being supplied and that is then through um, a clock tree in a in a in a soc there can be multiple clock domains there can be multiple uh, sources of the clock multiple pLLs and then there can be multiple um, clock dividers etc uh, and that thus it forms a kind of clock tree and which supplies different uh, blocks of the SOC okay uh, <clears throat> that clock gating can be applied at a, at a leaf level or a branch level uh, in the in the clock tree that we will see further using the clock gating cells So this picture I am sharing just to depict uh, in a typical SOC there can be different uh, power domains as well so uh, like different color coding in this picture shows different power domain one uh, uh, one CPU cluster is working is on one power domain other one is on other power domain some other circuits are working on other power domain right so that we have more fine grain control of uh, doing applying dvfs or power gating at this granularity so this is a like a big soc with multiple clock and power domains here we are focusing on the power voltage island or power domains right so these different colors are simply uh, depicting uh, different soc blocks which are in uh, different power domains and i extend that concept that in order to feed current or uh, supply power supply to those we have uh, a pimic uh, chip and um, that PIMIC is supplying uh, different vo voltage rails will be there uh, visually supplying to these power domains okay inside PIMIC there will be multiple regulators that we will see a bit little bit more about them we will know in coming slide so basic concept is that in, in our SOC there will be multiple power domains and respective clock domains for them they will be supplied uh, at different voltage levels and uh, the, we can be they can be fine grain control can be done for that particular block or those set of blocks for voltage and frequency 
So this is bit the same concept, uh, uh, just a clear picture just to uh, understand uh, uh, different voltage domains in an SOC. In general what happens that all the digital logic uh, is on one voltage domain or power domain and uh, memories are in one power domain. Your uh, application processors say uh, like in this case application processor 0, 1, 2, 3 uh, there might be four clusters and those are in different power domains. This, uh, this can vary but this is one typical example and uh, some other uh, circuits or blocks of SOC are in uh, other power domains. And uh, typically there will be memory uh, power domain, digital power domain, some of the some specific purpose units which need uh, fi more fine grain control like CPU will have their own power domains or the graphics if the uh, if the graphics unit is integrated graphics inside SOC that has its own power domain there will be always on circuitry which when all other power circuits co um, collapse uh, power collapse has happened the, there is one always on a on circuit is there which is required for a wake up circuitry right um, which should be on where if the interrupt comes some um, from external source and the circuit that that circuits in Aon are usually the ones which are required for power management like this color coding is here this is a low power manager uh, core or processor you can say and some of these sections which are required to communicate with that okay those are in always on domain and there, there will be some portion which will be analog so like this PLLs, PLLs are analog units, right? So they're VDDA, VDD analog. And uh, yeah, uh, this is packed pad power supply. So the pads will have a different power supply, power domain. This gives a good fair idea about the power domains in the SOC. So when there are multiple voltage domains, uh, then Obviously, there are some things that we need to take care because signals are passing through from one domain to other and that's why uh, level converters are required in uh, this kind of uh, uh, architecture. So um, there can be two type of uh, voltage uh, converters. One is for like going from VDDH to VDL means uh, from high voltage to low voltage and uh, low voltage to high voltage which is slightly more complex than previous one okay so these voltage converters are to be uh, deployed uh, when when the signal passes from one power domain to another power domain a voltage domain okay so <clears throat> what we saw so far like uh, we had diff for different power domains or voltage domains we have um, we need those power supply rails um, uh, with different voltages and usually that comes from a chip or a separate IC which is designed for supplying that uh, those power power rails and uh, that chip is called PIMIC power management IC and uh, these PIMICs uh, will have uh, regulators power regulators usually bug or sometimes bug or but boost uh, regulators uh, topologies may differ there are multiple topologies for these power converters uh, buck buck boost many other topologies are there say pick cuck and so these are switch mode power supplies these buck converters okay so these have the energy saving uh, com um, components right like inductor and capacitor and switch so the switch uh, charges these elements and and then uh, th depends on the topology ultimately the from dc to dc converters are those and it can in buck is buck converter is a step down so the output voltage will be less than the input voltage there can be other topologies of boost or buck boost ldos are linear regulator so <coughs> ldo is called low dropout register uh, or regulator and uh, so these are deployed they do not have any switching component or energy saving component no inductor or so <coughs> or, or switch so they are linear in and they are good 
uh, where a low current um, is very low current is required. So in those regions, rather than um, uh, doing a, a switch mode power supply, uh, LDO is done because obviously it is it takes lesser area. It needs it has bucks. Uh, the switch mode power supplies have many more component. Though those are more power efficient, and the efficiency of LDOs will be less because there will be power dissipation in the resistor. But for the low current purposes, this is good enough. And usually, this is um, uh, these these are implemented in the PMIC chip at and at times inside the SOC where the the main supply rails are coming to SOC. From that, some other voltage level can be derived can be drive using the LDO. So some the, the, at times there are there are internal LDOs in the SOC as well. But the SMPS are in dedicated. Uh, chip because it will have some external components as well right inductors will be outside on the board and uh, rest of the components might be inside some of the capacitors will be outside like that okay. the, um, some more uh, thing about this like design of these uh, th um, converters right the, there are so many factors there will be uh, continuous mode of operation discontinuous mode of operation and um, there will be multi multi phase converters for low ripple uh, um, uh, in the output power and the decisions will be taken based on what kind of uh, uh, converter we need what is the current uh, requirement and what is the noise tolerance on the rail all those factors will uh, come in handy uh, while designing uh, a buck for a dedicated uh, um, load in the SOC right yeah whatever I was explaining so uh, SMPS design is more complex this is just a very 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 simple uh, depiction of that uh, in which uh, like in this case when the switch is switch closes this is an inductor this is a capacitor and the current flows through inductor and charges the cap capacitor and when switch opens the connector keep trying to uh, uh, drive the current in the same direction and the, for the rest of the cycle right and flows through this internal diode so overall uh, voltage uh, is, uh, in the when the switch is on it capacitor kind of charges and then it can tries to retain the voltage while an uh, inductor tries to retain the current and this way uh, one average voltage comes out which is lesser than the supply voltage so this is a buck converter okay LDO is uh, is a low dropout register it is just a IR drop based uh, regulation okay in this picture I am just showing that in order to reduce the ripple in the final output there are two different regulators which are operating in 180 degree, degree 180 degree phase shift okay so uh, <clears throat> there can be more than two so the phase shift will vary then accordingly and ultimate aim, the aim is that the we get le lesser ripple in the output uh, current and a voltage all right so this was all about um, uh, <clears throat> uh, different uh, power domains volt power and clogged domains and uh, PIMIC and uh, now we take a little pause in our ne in the next chapter we will discuss uh, PMUs power management unit uh, in the SOC so whatever we concept we understood so far then there will be a controller which will actually be uh, executing that okay we will we'll, uh, see those power management units in the next uh, chapter we take a little pause over here thank you